Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Nom. So, you're going to end our uh, Season 2, Part 2, with another animated movie. Basically, you've ended our uh, our seasons completely with uh, animation. But this time, you are choosing your name. Yes. Which, which is a 2016 Japanese movie, a mm-hmm. Japanese animation movie. Mm-hmm. So, uh, tell us a little bit about it, man. So, um... Well, it's funny how I think this is my first pick in the romance genre. I feel mm-hmm. like um, this movie is it's it's not it's not real. It's almost like a slice of life more than mm-hmm. a romance. Uh, but it does have more romance. It has a little bit of romance in it. And uh, for people that don't know that, I only know the term "slice of life" through animes, where it's basically more of just a wholesome story about you know kids growing up. Or kids, basically a coming of age kind of story in some si- some sort of way, but it's happening in more uh, like during the summertime or during school life or something similar to that. Um, and based on this pick I did, it was a pick because we haven't done a, an idea like this in a long time, especially in anime where there's a whole Freaky Friday kind of thing of two characters switching each other places and kind of just seeing uh, – was it feel to be in the other person's shoes? And I guess that intrigued me in that kind of way um, to see where that goes because I think only in anime they can do weird ideas like this and it works for them. Um, but the main reason I picked this movie is the fact that how popular this movie became up there with Spirit Away. Spirit Away is one of my favorite anime movies of like all time with Studio Ghibli it's my favorite Studio Ghibli film and when I heard this movie was getting up there as one of the like most grossing movies of all time in Japan along with Spirit Away that caught my interest I was like whoa what is I because I didn't think anything was going to reach that That, you know that movie's phenomenal then this movie totally looks like it's a 180 of what Spirit Away is and it made it up there and it's the only non Studio Ghibli film that that made over 100 million so that intrigues me to find out why is that. Then I've been hearing it through just a following of people like, you got to watch this. This looks amazing. This is great. Um, now, I brought this on the list, but I don't know you personally if, you, if this name has came by your, through your mind at all. Are you seeing it? Or, just, or when I put this on the list, it's the first time for you hearing it. Um, for me, it was the first time hearing it. It's actually – I'm a little – it's weird when it comes to uh, Japanese anime and just anime in general. I think uh, you and I, for a long period of time, when we were in our 20s, um, were really kind of into anime, a lot of anime. Mm-hmm. But I, the thing with anime for me is kind of like a weird notion is that I was more into the actual like shows versus like the movies. So I personally am a little behind on a lot of the movies, just in general. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I think as we've gotten older, like I hadn't really gone back to watch the movies because either A, I'm not really one to uh, read anything with subtitles very much anymore. I'm the same. I might, have sub- I might have subtitles on just to see if I miss something. Mm-hmm. But as far as just reading it while well, I listen to Japanese, like I don't know if I just don't have the, the, uh, the multitasking ability to do so or else I. Or I'm doing something else while I'm watching the movie, and I I don't want to like stare at the screen the entire time trying to make sure lack I, focus, I right? I don't have the focus to to yeah mul- yeah multitask like look at the screen and stuff at the same time, you know? Yeah, because I mean, there's you know, you know there are times where you're just sitting there, you're, you just made a meal, you're eating, or you're looking at your phone versus some things and stuff like that. So I think a little bit more distracted nowadays. But so I, I'm a little behind when it comes to uh, actually I say a little I'm a lot behind when it comes to like the animated movies because mm-hmm. there there's a lot that I've heard that have been really good. But uh, we can go into the trailer talk here, and I'll, I'll say exactly what you said, um, almost verbatim in a weird way. Leave it to uh, Japanese animations; they're the only ones that can get away with different concepts and weird concepts to, to people who are from the U S because, you know, I think one of the things that you and I explained to people in general is that you can't explain an anime 
or an animated movie to a person and make it sound good. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think whenever you say it, it sounds very kind of weird or bland or not as cool. And watching the trailer in itself, like I, I, it, it reminded me of all like the old old animes that I watched, especially kind of like the love, uh, the love romantic ones and stuff like that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but there was nothing that I could do to explain to say say to someone to get hyped about it because just watching the trailer, I already with my history of watching anime and stuff like that before, I get it. But if I were, if I didn't have a clue and I was new to animation as a general, I don't know if it would necessarily be something of interest to me. Mm -hmm. But looking at the style, looking at the storyline, I mean, it, it's it. And surprisingly enough, to see that it was so it's such a big hit back in 2016, and me not really knowing about that, um, that part and enough um, makes me feel pretty solid about being able to watch this movie and thinking to myself, "All right, this is going to be a good movie." Um, the animation is gorgeous uh, in the trailer. It looks very beautiful, but I can see people watching the beginning of this an of this trailer and don't know what's going on. It wasn't until someone said, did we switch bodies? It's where you're like, oh, okay. Because the trailer itself just feels like it's two people destined to be the uh, destined to meet each other. But then like what? So what's so interesting about that? You know, here's this guy going on with his life, this girl going on his life. It's like, okay, what's the big deal on this? And then yeah. they hit it. You didn't get this special like Freaky Friday, like a lightning strikes at the wrong time or anything like that. It was just too normal day. It was almost like it gave a tour of, look how beautiful our animation is. Now, let's tell you what the story's about. It almost yeah. kind of gave you a tour of what's going on. Um, and I can see a lot of people kind of being turned off right at the beginning of this. It's like, okay, it's pretty, but why does it interest me? And then, you know, after they revealed it and everything like that, the question is to you as a as a watcher, if you're not, have you not seen an anime at all, would this really interest you just based on the trailer? Probably not. To be honest with you, I don't think the trailer could really spark the interest. I think you have to be a real like weirdly enough, you have to be an anime fan to really be attached to what's going on. But if I was a person that had never been an anime before and watched that trailer, it wouldn't inter it wouldn't interest me. It looks boring. So yeah, yeah. Could, I mean to kind of add on to it too. This is like. You know, people, especially with kind of what it seems like a romance, kind of like a coming of age movie. Mm -hmm. Like, w why would I would why you know, in some senses, as a as a person, assuming like you know, if you were a person that hadn't watched anime, it's like, why would I want to watch an anime, an animation on that particular topic? Because just watching like live action movies like The Notebook and stuff like that are mm -hmm. is just as good, if not you know more more emotionally you can connect to the people there. Um, with the anime, with anime, you know, with with the thing I will tell people or the audience just in general is that with anime is is that they really focus a lot more on the story. Um, when I mean the animation is 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 pretty. Don't get me wrong, but I think a lot of the anime it's able to push the boundaries of a particular story. That's something we would never do here in America. So the intrigue, the intriguing part about anime to, to me as a, a person who used to watch it is, is that they push that story and they are not afraid to do something and they're not, they're not afraid to take chances. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it so interesting. And that, that's what makes it so out of the norm compared to what we see here in America. So I, I challenge people to, to at least check out some of the anime animated movies. It's not like, you know, watching a Disney movie or anything like that, but it, it's, it, it makes you think differently. And um, I think a lot of people will find it entertaining or at least find something entertaining. I don't sit there and imagine they're going to become like, like animaholics where they're just watching anime all the time. But there's always something entertaining. Like Fruits Baskets to me was one of those movies that, you know, was it was an entertaining idea and completely hit its mark. Um, so I'm kind of curious because like, like I said, I hadn't really watched anime in forever other than just like the U S animations like uh, that you might see like Rick and Morty or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so watching this will be will be just a nice kind of uh, throwback to all that too as well. Yeah. And okay. with it being so popular, I kind of want to see where we go with that. But I agree with you. If you just if you if you never had any history with it and you came to watch this trailer, um, for me it has no interest. It would have it wouldn't I wouldn't be interested in watching this. It would be hard pressed to try to get. It's it would be hard for me to ask somebody to go on a date to watch the movie. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Unless I knew that they had a history of like an animation. Mm-hmm. So um, I think there's a specific audience for it, and it, you know, for the ca- casual audience, it has to be somebody that would have to take a really big risk. Risk. Yeah, you mentioned earlier about Americans, and when it comes to animation in America, um, Americans, mostly Americans, always like it to be like with goofiness, with animals and creatures, and some magical moment in there. There's not a lot of just normal human stories it has to be something magical and that's the reason why spirit away did so successful here in the u.s because it was weird and it took you on this journey and everything like that all studio all studio ghibli films have some kind of weird thing in it and that's why they do so successful and that's why like disney kind of helped publish those but your name is it's just normal it's almost like just a live action story but just an anime style you know, you could take this and make this a normal story and make it American style and it probably just be in the category of just a boring romance or something like that. So I am I am excited to see what happens. I hope that I hope this movie did a good job of sh- there's more to this than the trailer shows. Like we're going to see some really interesting surprises, and interesting ideas that they put in there. So I'm very excited about that because that's mostly what animes do, too. They show you stuff. But then there's stuff under there you just didn't know. They didn't want to show it because they don't want to. They don't want to ruin the surprise. So. No, no, that not at all. Like sinister undertones. All yeah, over. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, you hadn't seen this movie then, right? I have not. Okay, so this will be both uh, Jeremy and I's uh, opinion on the movie without actually seeing it. We both agree. If you hadn't watched the anime before, you wouldn't have been interested in the trailer. The trailer basically was more or less a way of them to show off like the animation style Mm -hmm. um for me you know excited just because of my the past and curious because you know it it is one of those things like you said there's going to be more to it uh jokingly aside we say sinister undertones but that's my rick and morty uh, reference (laughs) (laughs) sinister undertones okay then next that word just sounds cool sinister Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So with that, um, yeah, let's go check out this movie. And- yeah, we're going to check out the movie, and uh, we'll come back to you guys after uh, these uh, these non-paid advertisements that we need to get paid advertisements. Ka-ching. <laughs> and welcome you guys back, you know, after 107 minutes of exhilarating movie. <laughs> no we just uh, we, we just got back from watching... Uh, your the 2016 uh, movie that Jeremy chose, Your Name, which actually I say it's a 107 minutes, but I think I watched it three times, so it was like uh, 321 minutes you for me. You watched it three times? Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I watched it three times. Uh, for me, it was it was to try to f- figure out more to talk about with it. Okay. And it, it's not a okay. bad thing. I'm not trying to say it's a bad thing. I was just trying to figure out more things I wanted to talk to okay. and talk to about it too as well but jeremy man uh let me do a quick rundown uh so what did you watch this on i watched this on voodoo um yes yeah i watched on voodoo on my ps4 and um yeah um i don't think there was yeah no that was my only option i can't i can't for the few for for people i can't it's not on amazon uh, unless you want to buy it on Amazon, and it's definitely not on um, Netflix. So yeah, so it was actually a, a movie I bought on Voodoo. Um, so, but y- y- I think if you search it on Alexa or anything like that, they'll offer you uh, rentals that you can rent it off of YouTube and whatnot. But you can watch. You, I, we watched. We both watched this on Voodoo, which you, there's like five hundred thousand movies that you can stream mm-hmm. and watch for free. <laughs> And by notice yeah. us, Voodoo. Notice yes. us. 
<laughs> I need to um, like burn. I need to pull out a sign to say thanks, Voodoo, and then put it back. I need. I need to. I need to there make you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Voodoo, I use you all the time, and it. You know, I wouldn't. I would. We wouldn't sit here and talk. I wouldn't sit here and talk about it if I didn't actually uh, like the service in itself, and it's free. Like I said. You can buy movies and you can watch movies for free with little ads in between, kind of like Hulu was before. Mm. What well, Hulu used to be before. Right. But um, quick quick kind of rundown on this. This movie released uh, July 3rd, 2016 on at the Anime Expo. Released August 26, 2016 in Japan and released in the United States April 7th in 2017. Did... Uh, did Three hundred and fifty eight point three million worldwide. Mm-hmm. And is the top grossing movie in Japan, which uh or animated which, animated movie in Japan, right? Yeah, uh, like we mentioned in the uh trailer talk that it's yeah, right that, under Spirit Away. And, that uh Jeremy had mentioned. So Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of accolades. Couldn't tell you what the budget is on this, didn't couldn't find the budget on this, but did lots of moolah, and I will just say I can understand for sure why it did. Uh, Jeremy, what did you think? I want to say that it's interesting you said budget because I don't think a lot of animators, I mean, a lot of animated movies tell you how much they spend on production. Not not that i done my research of stuff. I never looked up like, huh, Akira costs this much to make. I, like, I just never really looked into that. So that might be something I personally will look into myself um, because this stuff, this stuff ain't cheap, you know, and this movie proved it right here. This movie ain't cheap. This is some really good animation. Um, the movie itself is, it's a, it's a warm, clever film. Um, and I'm glad that it didn't lean too hard on the romance. I feel like the romance took the backseat a little bit for the clever idea they were doing. Yes, there was romance, but you didn't get the romance until the very more towards the end of yeah. the two main people, in which I was very happy. I'm glad it wasn't like too all in your face from the beginning to the end. With that being said, I would say the beginning was a little weird, where it felt like it was like an anime opening of like a, an uh, anime TV show, which I think that should have been cut and just got straight to the main. Uh, the main people wait. The main person waking up, and then we just figure out from there. I feel like doing that yeah. beginning kind of spoiled it for me a little bit because it's like, okay, all right, cool. Uh, but I think it should just surprise us like at the beginning. Here it is. Let your mind go. Um, like I said, I think it is. I think it's a very clever movie. What they were trying to do with the whole t- um spoiler for people. This, <laughs> I was gonna say you know, this, whoa, is, whoa, whoa, whoa. this is this Let's is a, hold up a piece of paper that says spoiler alert, no, guys. No, no, no. You I have this. Far, you'll, you'll, you're, we're well, gonna spoil the plot of this. Yeah. Movie. So most movies we talk about on this show that they're spoiled, but you kind of already know where the plot's going. Here, there is a huge spoiler here, and if you really want to watch this movie for for what that surprise is, because it's a pr- it's a pretty interesting surprise. I recommend not watching this video until you finish watching it. I highly recommend it. Out of all the movies I have on choice, this is the one I would say, go watch it and then come back. But with that being said, we are going to open up this can of worms and talk about this. So be prepared for that. But if that interests you after this, I still recommend go see it. Um, Yeah, I was going to say, once you pop, you can't stop. Yeah. So when we find out that this relationship takes place in two different parts of Japan, one in um, Tokyo and the other one t- took in uh is it Aromi? Or, I think it's Aromi or Azomi or I forgot. Forgot. It's some, some sp- like it's a, it's some small town with a giant lake in the middle with all these towns circling around it, right? It's it's a town that uh you know if you watch the Simpsons where you know if Springfield existed it doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, that's a good point. Um you are going to nowhere. But um with that being said, I really like the idea of we get these two characters that almost felt like faith or destiny was was put on these two based on the movie that was trying to uh, demonstrate something that is the theme of this movie. Most Japanese animation movies, they throw something out there to kind of get you to pay attention of this is the theme, right? And the theme is, you know, the the golden hour the um the twilight of day and night both coming at the same time and that's what the movie kind of showed of these two characters 
come at the same time as of a certain moment of um of where the story's going, leading about a giant comet that is going to fly over past the earth, basically. And what is interesting about it is is the fact that you have these two characters, you have Taki and Misona, and I'm going to butcher names. Just on out there. I'm going to butcher names. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like also alert too, if you guys yeah. get annoyed with us butchering the names, Taki is probably the easiest name that we're going to be able to yeah. say in this entire movie. Yeah. Mitsu- uh, Mitsuya is, is, is a little bit different, but uh, I think that was a part of me watching it three times too, was just to try to get the names. Because same thing with our Battle Royal conversation, we knew we were going to, we were in for an uphill battle. Yeah. So just Nam, to let y'all know, English wasn't our first language. Yeah. Nam will be my spell check, I guess, <laughs> until I get it down right. Um, but you have these two characters. You have the one girl, um, Miss Misua. I think it's Misua. Misuha. Mitch, Mitsua. Misua. Yeah. Um, she is a girl born in this small town, um, which this town sucks. <laughs> Basically, what they describe how this town Apparently, is. Yeah. This town sucks. Like they have no doctor, no dentist. Uh, everything closes at 9 p.m. There's not really any place to work there and whatnot. This place sucks. <laughs> and she wants to get out of it and go into this, go to Tokyo. That's like her dream to like finish school and go to Tokyo. Meanwhile, you have Taki that lives in Tokyo, uh, just living his normal normal life, dealing with you know personal stuff in his life. What he's going to do after after uh, uh, after school. What is he going to do about his career? All that fun jazz. Um, but we come to find out that these two magically started switching roles. Like souls, basically, right? So you have uh, Misona in Taki's body and vice versa. And I like the setup of these. we're getting these characters coming in and all their friends telling them, dude, you were crazy last yesterday. I like that setup of like, what the hell happened? Like, you know, kind of set up. Um, and I like the fact that they're taking us down this road where everything is coming together and then how it's going to get fixed, you know, mm-hmm. due to the yeah. huge twist that happens in the middle where I honestly didn't see it coming that way, but I did predict how it was going to go. Um, so I think this movie can be easily predictable once you find out what the twist is. Um, yeah. And I think that I love the fact that we're getting this, all these friends together to kind of do this. It's not just these two dealing with it. You're getting these other characters that are joining in the middle of this. Um, But I think my one weakness of this movie is I feel like Taki got more favor in this movie than uh, Misoa because I think she should have got a fair share of it. Uh, Before I go further on, Nam, what's your thoughts about this? Um, I do agree with you at the very beginning. The whole anime opening at the very beginning, I sat there and stopped and wondered to myself, was there any movie that did something similar or that I could think of that wasn't already an anime, an established anime, you know? Because mm-hmm. I'd imagine like the Bleach movies or the Dragon Ball Z movies would have something very similar, but it, it did throw me off. I was kind of looking down at the time and then like it, they did their, their little opening. I looked up and I was like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Am I watching this? Am I just watching a really long episode? Am I, is this really necessary? So that was kind of a, that was kind of a, I would say a letdown. Not really a letdown, a put down for me. One one of those things that you know I probably could have done without too as well. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie is the epitome of slow burn. Um, this movie slow burns everything, mm-hmm. and there is and that and it's not a problem that it slow burns everything. In fact, it's it needed to. And I think that uh, I think that it's more one of those. It's more of to me. It's one of those movies that you really just kind of sit and watch and enjoy for the enjoy the ride because it's like it. You think it hits you with everything, but it doesn't quite hit you with everything. So I mean, like you, you mean you saw in the trailers and you see in early in the movie about the body switches and the mm-hmm. the, the the people switches. Um, what you don't know is, you know, the timing between the two, the two, which is great. Um, f- for me, the movie was actually really good. It's a, it a really good setup. 
Um, I think it stuck to its main story points more than it needed to, though. Um, Because kind of like you, I kind of wanted some more exploratory things with the characters. And I didn't get that, you know. Are you saying, and I think I agree with you here. Are you saying that I wish that the first half of the first half of the movie was a little bit more expanded out longer than than the finally getting to the real point yeah, of the story? Yeah, yeah. Because an hour forty three is a long time, and I do. Yeah, that I I wanted to see some more exploratory things. I wanted to see more of Taki and Mitsuha like in each other's bodies, doing more things and interacting with I, more people. I hundred percent agree like with that. that. I 100% agree that because I feel like that we got more time with uh, Masua and Taki's body more Mm -hmm. than Taki and Masua's body. And what I mean by that is when it was time for Taki and Masua's body, we just got these serious moments. Like all we got from is the kids talking about, man, you were crazy doing A, B, and C. But we never got a a, a day in a life of Taki going to school, dealing with the situation, and then going home. But we got that with Taki – Going to yeah. school, going to eat, going to work, and going home, and that yeah. was a little disappointing. Of like, why did they cite it like that? We should have. Yeah, this, then, yeah, yeah. And I was gonna say, and they did. Uh, what was it? Uh, it's not an homage. What do they call it? Where they just kind of montage cut little scenes. What's it called? Montage. Are you talking about a little montage? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They did a montage. They did a small, mo- like a very, very tiny montage where those two were talking to each other about. It's like, why is this girl coming up to me and professing our love? What is this happening? Mm-hmm. Like, you get to see glimpses on the montage, but that wasn't that didn't satisfy me enough to see how they interacted in each other's bodies. And it it didn't take away from the movie, but it was just kind of one of those things that you wish there was more because I think what they did with the movie was is that they they really stuck to what they were trying to uh, give you, you know. Because they were giving you, they you thought at the very beginning they gave you everything. Then they were kind of slowly kind of giving you a little bit and a little bit a little bit um, as the movie continued. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, I would say in a weird way, it's kind of like a mystery, but not really. Mm-hmm. Um, think of it as in like, you know, for a lot of women who might have seen Lake, like Lake House or something like that. It's something similar to what that. What about Notebook? Would you put Notebook up there? Uh. I, I wouldn't say notebook per se. Okay. But I do agree with you on the romance, slow burn on the romance too as well. Because you kind of figured these two would find, you know, these two connected in this way that eventually there's an emotional response between the two of them, right? Mm -hmm. Because they lived in each other's bodies. So I can understand that. But then again, you didn't really connect per se to it because you didn't get to see enough of it. Yes, to yeah. to kind of uh, like, to kind of like all right, I can see why Taki is Taki is digging Musa, uh, Mitsua and uh, Mitsua is digging Taki, but you know neither here nor there. Yeah, but I would say slow burn all the way across the board for sure. Um, so talking about the first half of the movie where we're seeing some of the highlights to me, I think the first half had really good highlights before it kind of kind of just went to kind of more of a dead stop and then we're just letting it just run its course. Uh, I like the fact that they're both, it's almost like they're both being reborn to see like what it would be like to be a boy and what it would be like to be a girl kind of feel. Um, Mm -hmm. Especially like Taki, like even like waking up, like realizing like I have breasts and I'm like trying to understand that. To Masua and Taki's by learning that she, you know, she has, you know, privates, you know, and just the fact of like them understanding what they are is funny, especially, you know, Masoa said like in the next lifetime, I was, I was a hope I was a boy, which it was like, wink, wink, here it comes kind of moment. Um, but, um, yeah. but I like the fact that you're, they're going out to explore and trying to play off of, okay, apparently these are my two friends. So how do I deal with that? You know, and vice versa for Taki with the, with, you know, going back in time to deal with that. Um, I really, I really like that. Especially, I think the big star of the the one the character that helped carry that movie a lot because no other character really carried the movie or got a bigger spotlight than Miki, right? One of the one of the uh, love interests in Taki in Taki's life, um, because in Masoas you got Tess 
or Tessie and uh, Sakura. You got her, her, her two friends, but Taki only had really Tosaka and uh, uh, Shanta. I think that's how you would say it, Shanta. Um, but or Shanta, whatever. But Mickey was the other like most part of that movie because you know she was a waitress working with Taki. They went on a date, even volunteered to go with him on this crazy trip to find out who this girl is that has been taking over his body. Um, but at the same time, you know, I wish, I really wish that there was some question, there was, you know, when you watch this movie, you, they're trying to answer those questions that you're thinking in your head and you hope they answer them. I feel like there's still some loose ends that I never really got to understand. And maybe you can help me out with that. Like we know because of the time zones that, you know, when Taki went to go see where she lived based on his image that he can remember, right? Yeah. You know, doing all this research and stuff. And he couldn't remember the name, but he knew the drawings and everything like that. And then you, <laughs> you know, you go on this giant trip to go find it, come to a dead end, don't know where to go. Then a person at a restaurant that they were saying, a noodle ramen place, figured out, like, hey, that's such and such. And then the other two characters, Mickey and Ta- Tusaka, that joined Taki. And by the way, this is Taki normal. Uh, this is not Mesua inside Taki's body. Um, then it's funny how those two just realize, like, oh, you mean that town? And it's like, you guys never seen what that town looks like, but you know what that town is, right? It's kind of interesting. I just never really the thought about it. The town that got hit by the comet. Yeah, like, you guys know what it is now the whole time. Um, and then the other part is, like, I guess, like, how come Mesua's was in Taki's body, never cared to try to go home with Taki's body. Does that make sense? Because she had to work a lot because she ate all the sweets in his body. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's confusing for people that are hearing this because there's a, body, a lot of body switching and whatnot. But like, yeah. you know, Metsua, um, uh, Metsua is in Taki's body and she's really there to help, you know, Taki with with his issues when he when she's in his body like helping out with dates helping out with other stuff learning the world everything like that and kind of vice versa per se i don't think Taki really helped out miss in her life she was, i was gonna say she was kind of a lesbian i mean she was she was i uh, i asked that i was like that's interesting because <laughs> she was like she was kind of a lesbian because she definitely got a date with akidera and that's true that's true and i'm like i'm like legit right praise <laughs> right um but i guess my mindset was like why did you try to go home and talk his body because it's funny later on that in the in towards the kind of towards the nail into the film she starts having a messua in that world back in her time had the we see a flashback of her going to tokyo one day and runs into him you know yeah, like she, it's like 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 she i went to go find him yeah. yeah yeah and it's like now you remember that but as a viewer it's like i feel like that should have been told us a, lo- a, a little earlier than now it just feels inconvenient as they're trying to help the town not get killed by a John Comet because the spoiler alert is is that Metsua and her town are destined to get hit by sh- a couple of shattered of this comet that flies by yeah and, and we find yeah. out that, oh go ahead yeah I was gonna say for the audience uh for the audience those who've seen the movie and those who hadn't so there's body switching, as we talked about, as Jeremy and I alluded to. When there's a time, and I wouldn't say time travel, but there's a time thing that goes with it too, because Mitsua and Mitsua, her her body and her life is actually three years prior to the actual events happening in uh, Taki's life currently. So they were switching, but they were also switching, and he was he was going back to her life, which was three years prior to the actual current time, because mm-hmm. the comment hasn't hit yet. And so the conversation is is that you know um, there's a comment that's going to split in half, and one one part of it's going to hit the town that she's in during a ceremony that they do every like so often. The uh, the autumn festival. The autumn festival that, that they're going to do every like you know so often, and then it's going to kill five hundred people within this town. So she's actually—I mean, if you were to take current time now, she would be dead. 
but he's he's switching bodies with her in whatever relative time period that they're both in. Um, to kind of answer your question, at least my thought on that answer, that one, Jeremy, is, is that I think for Mitsua, you know, for her to be in Tokyo is a new experience that she's just she's just going to try to eat up as much of that experience as she can. Mm-hmm either hanging out with friends doing homework because they're in high school. She's in high or he's in high school. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. He's in high school and I think she's not in high school. She's in school, but I don't think she's in high school. Okay. But she still got his responsibilities like going to school, doing dates, um, going to work, stuff like that too. So she might, she might have been too kind of enthralled with trying to live that Tokyo life that she's been wanting to live for like years and trying to survive that Tokyo life, which is probably why she didn't think to herself, well, I should go to, mm-hmm. I should go back home, you know? See, I guess that's where the weakness of the movie is, why we talked about before, is I wish the first half was more expanded so we get these characters kind of st- get a little bit more more air to breathe so we get these kind of, these little questions figured out because the only thing you know from these two is they, they set rules on their phone like, okay, you can't do this, this, and this, Right. And then you find out later that it was a time frame of how yeah. long, even before the comet, there was a time frame where they stopped switching bodies, right? Mm-hmm. So you know there was a certain date from A to B when this was going to happen. And it was I, 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 I was kind of intrigued by that because I honestly thought it was going to go until the comet hit. I didn't know it was just going to stop here um, because, you know, when it gets later on, where when it's time to save the town, they meet a, they meet up for that one moment due to a twilight, right? In this one area, because you find out that Taki is connected to her in a weird way due to a ribbon that is that um, that he gave her due to a situation on a subway when Masoa decided to go to Tokyo to see, you know, Taki. Kind of. The ribbon that she gave him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because Taki yeah. doesn't remember where the ribbon is from. Through this whole time in his life, he doesn't remember where this ribbon came from. Right? Yeah. And that's the interesting part about this movie was the fact of like how the time works is even though they're three three years uh three years apart, in that aspect, they're slowly forgetting each other. And then slowly yeah. remember each other, then slowly forgetting each other. And it goes back and forth based on the choices that they made in their lives. Um, it gets a little for for people that are watch that would watch it. I think it got a little a little confusing at the end of where they were trying to go with it because it almost felt like they almost broke their own rule, sort of. But you know, at that time the movie was about to wrap up, so I guess it doesn't really matter to the point where was, like you know. Yeah, I was gonna say it was it was definitely interesting. I mean, because they both were living during that time. Yes. Except for he just knew he knew nothing of her, and he just knew that there was a comet that happened at that time. So he didn't know anything of her until they switched. They started switching bodies. So yeah, there's a little bit of continu- continuity, uh, continuity that that could be asked or questioned there. Um, but I mean, to be fair, you know, if some random girl gave me a ribbon and I knew nothing about what was going on during that time. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't. I would probably not remember her after a while too, mm-hmm. just cause. Just cause the whole the whole um, what was it kind of like what you said the whole deal where they started writing each other's names on their hands, mm-hmm. waking up and stuff like that to try to remember each other. And then they started forgetting. That one was a little bit. Um, that one I was kind of like okay, so. This well, is where we. This is where we're gonna bring in the chart, like a uh, like a uh, Doc Brown did in Back to the Future, right? It's like here's the 1985 that we know. Here's the alternate 1985 yeah. that they created, and this is why they forgot each other, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, because the because two things that I learned we know about this movie. One is about moments. This movie's all about moments, and. Mm-hmm. Whatever you do in that moment can change the next moment that comes up next, right? And then the second thing is is that the more these two succeed, the more they forget about each other, weirdly enough, yeah. right? 
Because yeah. like you're seeing Masoa, for example, for our listeners, if you see Masoa trying to hook uh, Taki up with Miki, then she's slowly going to get forgetting real quick because his main focus was on her. But mm-hmm. now if he was interested in Miki, uh, Miki at the time, she would disappear. Nothing would change. She would just slowly disappear, uh, probably die. Um, and then I think it'd be the other other way around too, as we saw towards the end of Taki helping save the town. And because he saved the town, he forgot about her. You know, so it's interesting that success for saving each other's lives, the sacrifice is we're probably never going to meet each other again. Yeah, Hopefully. it's 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 that alternate kind of like timeline or with that alternate look that's going to make him disappear. It's kind of like a again I want to equate it to Back to the Future. It's kind of like when Marty <laughs> McFly was when Bring Marty out the McFly was jam, when he was jamming, he was jamming and he was looking at the photo and his brother was slowly disappearing and he was slowly disappearing too as well. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like that in a weird way. It's just based on the decisions and what's not happening and what's going to happen that will create whatever the current present is or the new present, you know? Do you think it would have been a little bit more interesting if the main character... If Marty McFly showed up? Yeah, it would have been more interesting. <laughs> you stole that! Okay, no, just kidding. Um, you gotta go back to the future! <laughs> yeah. No, um, would it be... Do you think it would have been interesting if the two main characters try to explain their situation to their friends instead of them trying to figure out? Do you think it would have been... Now, granted... It probably wouldn't solve the situation, but I think as a viewer, would that be interesting just to see them try to explain, like, I am a woman in a man's body. <laughs> yeah, besides the grandma and the dad figuring that out. Yeah, yeah, right? Um, you know, I would. I felt Saki explained it a little bit more to Okadera and uh, Tesha Gawara. Or not Tesha Gawara, um, Okadera and... Uh, Taki's Taki's guy friend. I can't think of his name. Uh, are you talking about Shanta or are you talking about Tosaka? Tosaka. Okay. Yeah, Tosaka. Okay. So I, I feel like those, I feel like he tried to explain it to those two and those two were just like, he's crazy. But we're with you. Let's do this. But we're with you. Let's, let's, let's travel. I honestly, okay. I actually love that part of those two going with him for, for no matter what, because I pictured I question how far would you go and how far I would go. Like you say, I don't know if she exists, but I want to drive to Florida and see if this girl exists. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I, I, think I, I think I would think do that, that. Was cool too, because that's true, right? Because between good friends, between good friends or best friends, I think, uh, I think, I think you and I would probably be like, sure, let's go. You know? Yeah. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be like a dumb and dumber moment where you're <laughs> like. <laughs> Needing to get a suitcase to hers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a chance. <laughs> no, I, I actually really, ch- I really like that moment because yeah. after yeah, the only, only one thing I didn't like about that, but go ahead. Okay. Oh, I was gonna say I like that because it showed that Mickey was fine with it after yeah, after was, the socially awkward moment that they had. And and it was, was like okay, I wasn't sure about because I don't know if Okadera would have would have been okay with that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that, but. At the same time, I kind of liked it because it's more like, okay, I guess like after they're like, I guess we're friends. All right. I'm, and it, it almost felt like she had nothing else to do. It was like, yeah, let's go. It'll be fun. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> I thought First off, she gets my swing award. Swing. Mm-hmm. And I guess the reason I like that because I wanted it to be for the other side. I wanted uh, Sakura and Tessie, uh, Mesua's friends, to do the same thing. Like, I'm going to Tokyo. You two come with me. And we would mm-hmm. see that cross, right? I would love to see them going there and them going to Tokyo. You know, just to see, just just for just to see that would be funny. And the reason, like, she's not here. Well, he's not here. <laughs> I thought that'd just be funny in that way. And then that'd be a funnier twist of like they're three years apart. And, and yeah. you know, like that'd be just interesting. So it'd be like Shaun of the Dead, right? Where they just kind of walk past each other and they yeah. run into each other. Yeah. Or uh, Zombie Land or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it would be interesting. I, I I would highly enjoy that. That was probably one of the biggest highlights for me for that part was going on the search for her. For better or for worse, these two came. 
Uh, and we, and I also like it too, Nam, because we got it. We got a nice tour of this movie. Like we got to see some scenery, all this stuff. Cause I really cherish this movie's scenery. There was some beautiful scenery in this movie, like awesome scenery. Um, and I think that helped me carry this movie because I'm not going to lie. Even those movie is a slow burn. Most slow burns have some boring parts and there were some boring parts. Um, some parts that I think I question too. Like, is it weird to me, Nam, that once they went Back, sorry, three years in Mitsuo's world, in in her in her town. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think it's weird that when they took that trip to go see the shrine in in a crater up top this mountain per se, and you have her, her sister, and her grandmother going right, and mm-hmm. you find out that in the movie it felt like that every time they go there, it felt like they got there quicker every time. <laughs> you know you know like like towards the end of the movie like okay it's getting dark when it gets dark shoot the thing i'll be back i'm gonna go up to the shrine like you make it sound you'll be there in like 20 minutes what's the movie show like you got the 20 minutes like the first time y'all went look it sounded like several hours it's like you guys had to go in the daytime to make it there in the in the in the afternoon but no Jeremy, this- they're, <laughs> they're running on next gen systems they understand that once they get to they get fast travel it's just I, fast travel right I, fast travel. I think it's just funny that way because like she they rode a bike she rode a bike up there and everything I'm like man you got there fast like yeah. was there a shortcut did you found out later i was like that was weird like, dude that was weird but that was learned, funny you learned something from jason i don't get this but here's the this funny part, but here's the funny part now that up there going up the mountain took it was faster than her running down this road to stop her dad from telling the telling everybody is a fake announcement to get everybody out of town like that scene took forever like running down she fell all this stuff that was like you guys are just trying to fill time dramatic effect right <laughs> you yeah, know like was, was, no, if you wanted to go slow mo that was about as slow as you can go yeah there was part of this movie that felt like we get it kind of moments like we get it you can speed it up we get this you know and that's why i think the the la- the, the last part of the film was too long for what it was worth like the build up didn't satisfy me so it, I was like, I wondered about that. So is it that or is it just because the way it's paced, the way it's kind of movie it is, the kind of movie it is, there's not a, there's not a, there's not a part that's going to be quick paced. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That it's, it's literally the style of the movie. It is like the moment you started watching the moment when anyone starts watching the movie, it, it has a, you kind of understand the story to a point, but you understand the pace immediately. Like it was just going to be one of those movies where there wasn't really a high, there wasn't really a low. Okay. But there was, it was just a straightforward movie or not straightforward, but a straight going movie. And that you can get emotionally high and low, but you weren't going to get faster or slower. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that's how it felt. Like when I watched this movie, like it was just like the lazy river. If you were at like Whitewater or water, any water park, you just were on the lazy river and you were just kind of traveling along. So I'm that's gonna, how I felt that this movie was. So I'm going to ask you um, a pretty dangerous question, and it's also to the listeners. Um, at the end of through this whole journey of this movie, did you want those? Did you want Taki and Masoa to meet, or did you want it to be they just walk past each other and they just go on with their lives? Um, actually, you know, to end it, well, actually, you know, now that you mentioned that it, it could go both ways in my opinion and been fine. I would have been fine with it both ways. Here's the reasoning why, because I didn't see enough of the bill between those two to love each other or to have such a deep connection other than just trading bodies, Mm -hmm. like a deep loving connection that they would like connect with each other that way. It's not like Ghost or anything like that where, you know, where you can understand where Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze were like so in love or, mm-hmm. or Romeo and Juliet where like you can kind of understand why the It's like the only real connection that they had was that they lived in each other's bodies and they lived in each other's shoes. And there wasn't really anything else outside of that. Most of the interactions between them were just through friends, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, through their friends letting them know how they were acting before so it's you know it would have been interesting but i mean for a happy moment i definitely understand why they went with that but i probably could have went with the other way because 
I agree. Like, I don't think they're uh, as much as you get, you want a deeper connection between the two for that to make more sense to me. Mm-hmm. Because, they would teach because they would, just, uh, uh, before you go on, I just want to say for the listeners, um, after a certain event towards the end happens, we pu- we go five years later. Yeah. And then we're getting this ending we're talking about. Okay, go on. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, um, I feel that was the way. In fact, actually, I wrote down, um, I feel like they should make a sequel to this movie. It should be called uh, Your Name, then it's The Final Destination, <laughs> where uh, death comes and just kills everyone because he's pissed that he didn't get the 500 souls that he was looking for. <laughs> just, just throwing it out there. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a follow up, but uh, just a different story, different setting. Just another yeah, one of those. So they did say there was kind of a sequel um, called Weathering with You. I don't oh, know if okay. you heard it. Okay. Yeah, they said Weathering with You is kind of a sequel in a sense that the the uh, the two leads of this movie actually make an appearance quite often in that movie. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So okay. So um, in that sense, you know, that's kind of a sequel. Um, but yeah, I, I can see where you're going with that. What do you feel? What do you feel? I that? honestly, f- I think that this movie didn't, like you talked about, like the buildup of these two characters were not really there. It was just, they just happened to deal with the consequ- deal with the situation they were given to them. Um, I think I would have been fine for them just walking past each other and leave it open to maybe they will meet each other because now they live in the same place. Yeah. They they live in the same uh, they live in Tokyo now so because in the at, towards the end they have run past each other one time they didn't know and then it was again we start seeing them kind of slowly you know kind of bumping or hell even I could even take the fact that Taki could have ran into her friends and yeah. then they could have said hey our friends coming uh, to meet up and then maybe we we see the door and he turns around and looks and then black out. Or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, because, there's because, a lot of other movies that did this a little bit better in a sense mm-hmm. of uh, setting up that kind of star-crossed lovers that ran into each other and stuff like that. So yeah, I didn't really care for the I stairs. I didn't really care about the subway. Then they both got out and they run <laughs> and they got the best directions right. You got a girl that never lived in Tokyo in her life, but a guy that knew where he was going, and somehow they ran into each other. Whatever. I'm not going to question it. But just the fact – I didn't like the stare thing, and then they stop, and they walk past each other, and then they ask the question. It wasn't really satisfying for me. So it was better off that they could have just walked away or or the idea I brought up that they could have connected with somebody that they know or work with them or something like that. That's more believable to me than that – and then connect to Masua that way or something like that. So. Yeah. Because Okadero is definitely a cutie. Yeah. Um, um, but so I was gonna say f- for you though, in that s- since we know the whole body switch and stuff like that, do you feel you would have done more with the body switches? Yes. Like you personally? Yes. Like oh. you mean you're telling me if I was in that situation or just the yeah. idea of the if you're in a, yeah, I was going to say I would have done a lot more too as well. Okay, so we're talking about if I was actually in that situation, I switched yes, I would have done a lot yeah, more. I would have done what a lot would more. You, what were some of the things you would have done? Um, I would try to know their know the friends a little bit more and go out and do more stuff. The movie mm-hmm. really showed them only going to cafes. Yeah. And we're not seeing anything else. Like, she, she really liked cafes. Right, right. Like like this should be a kid and a, and a carnival, right? I should be like test driving everything that is there. Like – Let's go. Let's go to a theme park. Let's go to a movie. Let's go do A, B, and C. Like, show. I want to show. I want to have fun, and I want the audience to know how fun it is to take advantage of this situation. I'm a guy, you know. Yeah. She already tried to mack on a girl. That was funny. And that was cute, you know. Like, yeah. like I would see where that would go, where where, where that went. Uh, we got the date, yeah. but the date was a little. It was just there. There wasn't really anything crazy about it. Um, yeah. And then the other way around. Um, I would have tried to like, um, you know, explore more of that land, go do yeah. stuff, you know, go out of town, do something. I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, it would be a lot. I, 
you know, when I was thinking about this more, uh, like I think to myself, if you were a girl that became a guy, I think there would be more things that you would want to do and experience versus when if you're a guy that became a girl in mm-hmm. in this aspect, right? Yeah. Because, you know, I never I never thought, you know, to myself, like, what would I do if I was a woman, you know? Mm-hmm. Like in my mind. And I always, you know, like in just like a random thing, you know, A, you know, I already have boobs as it is. I can touch myself. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not worried about that. Um, but I mean, it's you know, what it would be like to be with a with a dude as a as a woman, I I, I wouldn't care for that. Which um, which I wish they did that. I wish they showed like because you know Tessie apparently had a little crush on Mesua. That would have been interesting of him trying to like kind of holler at Mesua at with Taki in it just to see that awkwardness of like maybe Taki pushing him away, like get away from me. You know the classic yeah. Japanese push him off and he falls off of something crazy or something like that. Yeah. Um, I wanted to see more of that. Like, how does a guy deal with the situation of another guy talking to you as a girl? Like, how do you yeah. deal with that? You know, exactly. and they just didn't show much of that. And I think that's the part everybody's going to remember from this movie. It's like, why do we see more of Taki doing this? You know? Yeah. And so, you know, it'd be kind of interesting too if like uh, Taki learned how to do martial arts in. Uh, in uh, Mitsuwa's body, and all of a sudden she goes back and she just is able to do martial arts. She's like, Where did I learn this? Yeah. yeah. It'd be just kind of like a weird notion. Like her body just now, like, you know, he's giving her muscle movements and stuff like that she can remember. Hell, I, I honestly thought there was going to be a scene in the movie where Taki as a girl was going to be scared to go to uh, a girl's bathroom. I yeah. thought that scene was going to happen at one point. Like, like he would not go. You're already not going to the boys. He just has to figure out, like, I don't know what to do. Like, I thought that yeah. scene would have been there. Uh, I thought there was going to be more connection of the sister. I feel like the sister mm-hmm. was mis, uh, misused. The sister was there, but it would have been interesting to see the sister connect more with with Taki and Masua in that way. You know, instead of every time opening the door, like, are you feeling your boobs again? Like, come down and eat breakfast. Like, yeah, you felt like there, there was something going to happen with that connection. And I feel like they didn't utilize that. And that was kind of. Yeah, there, was, there wasn't very much character development, in my opinion, mm-hmm. in this movie. Um, I think I'll, at least in my opinion, unless I didn't see I, I didn't I did. Maybe I didn't see it and everybody else did. Who knows? I don't think they can. Uh, they can put it in the comments below and let us know. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. There could have been more character development. That what I would sacrifice for some of the time that they use at the end that could have been cut up. Especially and the beginning. Cut that beginning. That that two or three minutes could have been used for something else. You know, and all these other other takes that they had towards the middle and the end, I feel like that that could have been sliced up. Um because when I went into this movie, I thought, based on even the trailer, I thought it was going to be more lo- – the the percentage of maybe um, 70 entertaining than 30% serious, you know? But it felt like that we got 30% fun than 70% serious. And I wish – and the trailer showed – kind of showed I thought it was going to be more to it, which – welcome to animes – there's more to it than you think. So, all right. Yeah. So let's go ahead and go to the awards. Um, I'll go first with my award. I was gonna say the award, the awards were kind of hard in this one. Oh, Not dude, why do you think it took me so long to text? I'm like, what can I pick out of here? So, yeah, I, I had a random question generator. I had a random generator. I did. So I'm just gonna go with that. Okay. <laughs> there you. Go. Um. So my my award is called. Well, isn't that sweet award? Um. Most romantic movies have sweet moments. So for this for this one, I want to pick what are some of the sweet moments that someone did for somebody else in this movie. Um, so I have my three nominees, which, you know, if you're new to the show, we always try to pick on par three, but at, more can be added. Um, the first one is when Taki's in Masura's body, she ended up carrying um, – uh, her, um, <clears throat> sorry. God, it's gonna be a lot of confusing words. Okay, so Taki. Nope. Let me rephrase it. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all, right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so Masua's grandmother, uh, has a shrine that they go to on top of the crater of the mountain, right? So, mm-hmm. in that moment, Taki took over Masua's body, and they were making their way up there, 
and Taki volunteered to carry her the rest of the way. And we kind of got to see how far that go. And I'm like, she was willing to walk that much? That's a long walk. Uh, so like, so it was it was sweet of Taki to volunteer to do that in Masua's body. And we know Which that Masua's funny strong. if Masua, if Taki would have just fell down and realized he was too weak to do that. That would have been funny. That would have been funny. Um, you just not like you magically carry that strength over to your to your other body, you know? Right. By the way, missed opportunity for a bonding with the sister, by the way. Just don't add out there for the listeners. Um, yeah, most, most so definitely. Number two is uh, Masua and Taki's body fixing Miki's uh, work dress at the restaurant mm-hmm. they were at. And she sewed it and had a little design on it. I forgot what the design on it, but it was a cute design. And that was really it was nice. like a little flowery design. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually have an extra one now that I thought about it. The next one is uh, Masua and Taki. Uh, Masua and Taki Bagi helped Taki get a date with Mickey. That was nice of her. Uh, and then the last one is uh, Shenta and Tosaka help um, Mesua and Taki's body um, with like everything that day. So like. You know, Masua is in Taki's yeah. body, uh, Taki's body for the first day, and she just goes out. She doesn't think about bringing food with her or anything. So Shenta and um, Tetsu, uh, Tosaka helps helps her helps him out or helps her out by like mm-hmm. giving part of their lunch, um, helping them buy like some dessert at the cafe, and all that stuff. So that was sweet. So Nam, is there anything you want to add to my confusing list of nominees? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, for some reason, I think Taki is just going to get the sweep on this. Um, Taki, uh, Taki, helping save the uh, save the village for sure. <laughs> okay. And the next, uh, then uh, uh, Mitsu, Mitsu, Mitsua, Mitsua getting uh, Taki a date with Okadera. Um, oh, okay. So we're talking about the same person. You're saying Okadera. I'm saying Mickey because that's like yeah. I'm you're just, saying Mickey. And I'm talking about. Okay, Okadera, so it, yeah. it's the same one. Same, I did. Same it's the same one I put. Yeah, same person. Okay, yeah. So, um, so mm-hmm. you only added one because I already, I already said that one. All right. Oh, did you say the date or did you? I say said Misua helped Taki get a date with Mickey. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're. I good. thought you just said the dress. My bad. No, I said that too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So Nam, what do you lean towards? <laughs> well, I mean, it's hard to say that Taki didn't Taki uh, Taki not saving the world is not or not saving the village is not the number one answer on this one. But if we're talking about just sweet, um, yeah. sweet wholesome kind of an award, I mean, oh, that one's a tough one. Um, probably what what Mus- Mits- Mitsua did for uh, Okadera um, without without. Without making it seem like she was trying to mack on her or anything like that. Okay. I mean, because everything else is just kind of like, I guess it wouldn't be really sweet. I mean, it was really cool that my homies followed me for no reason. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's really, it's awesome, superbly awesome that this girl got me a date with the, with the hot, with the hot person at, at work. Um, but that, you know sweet of her to do that you know she she incidentally did that so mm. and then she wanted to go on the date herself and she was crying at the mirror because of it yeah um, she was all like i hope you have fun but i really wanted to go yeah so is that the one you're picking though yeah i'm gonna go with the dress fixing the dress okay yeah okay um now i'm gonna add one more guy just thought about this and you can tell me if this is sweet or not uh mickey and tosaga joined taki on the journey to um, figure out about this girl if she exists or not. Yeah, I thought you put that one on there. I did not. I said uh, Shenta and Tosaka helping her, uh, helping Mesu out on her day as Taki the first day. You know, oh, okay. like she oh, was okay. in school and she didn't know what to do. Yeah, all I that get, stuff. I get what you're saying. Right, so, gosh. but, but, but. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah. Uh, but either way, I'm still with the dress because it was the first <laughs> sweetest thing and I didn't see that coming. And I didn't yeah. know Mesua knew how to sew until later on. I didn't put two and two together until like yeah. I don't know why because like you saw like two or three times of her doing. It. I was like, oh yeah, she can sew. I ask you. So <laughs> like she so. knows how to do that. She knows how to intertwine uh, wires, and he knows how to be a waiter. Yeah. Okay. So uh, your turn. Um. So my award is the Breakfast Club Award, which is which is uh 
the award for the person that deserves detention. Okay. <laughs> because if you guys don't know, The Breakfast Club is a movie about people in detention. So that is the award. Is this and, is this more like who you dislike? You could say that. I was just saying someone who did something that deserves detention. Okay. Okay. All right. Go on. It's kind of where I was going to go with it. Okay. So for me, nominee number one is Taki. Okay. For uh, touching Mitsuwa's boobs without telling her. Okay. And her permission. <laughs> okay. Constantly, too. Just constantly. Just three times, I think. Just, I think it was three times. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't have to cry and be like, sister! Yeah. <laughs> that's that, that, that's kind of creepy. Yeah. So he deserves that. Uh, Teshi Gawara. Um, I'd be helping the situation. I get that. But bombing stuff doesn't mean <laughs> dude, doesn't mean you don't go away with some sort of consequences you deserve dude, detention that was the most gangster thing anybody have done I, I I salute to him I salute to him like good for you man good for you but you you kind of hurt that town a little bit but go on <laughs> yeah he was just like I just want to blow stuff up yeah is, is this this is distraction I promise people mm-hmm. will move um and honestly those are actually the two that I have listed on there. I didn't actually have a third or fourth. So, you have anybody else? So I'll add the third one. I think he the person we talked about was not we haven't talked about him through the whole conversation. He needs to be talked about because uh he was a character that got mentioned. He's been throughout the whole movie, but that's uh Toss Hik- Hiki and that is Mesua's father. And he Can was and he was the um he's basically their father that you find out later that he's a widow. He's a widow because Mesua's mother died due to illness, I believe. Yeah, illness, and he didn't want to be part of the. Sh- he didn't want to be part of this whole shrine thing or anything like that. So basically, what happened is that the grandmother kind of like dis like disown him and decided to take the daughters under her. And so now, to- uh, Toshiki is um, also too. I want to say, was he considered the mayor of the town? Yeah, he was the mayor of the town. He was the mayor of the town. The only he reason, was the mayor of the town and, and the father, too. Yeah. Um, the reason why I think he he needs attention is because of the neglect of not, like, always, tr- like, being not being there for her kid, being for the kids, but the one scene where in Taki, when Taki was in uh, Mesua's body and trying to talk to him, the way he just straight up, like, disrespect Mesua and Taki at the same time in that moment um, was a little over too much for what it is. And, and I was going to say, when, with that, go ahead, keep, keep going. I'm I was sorry. just saying for that particular part and not ever like believing anything and just being so negative about it. Like, you never really got the whole story of, <clears throat> of Tohiki, of why the way he was. Yes, the Yes, his wife died, but... The fact that it felt like he was more at the shrine and everything in that more than like the family itself. And I never really got an understanding of that whole story clearly. Yeah. And I was going to say they left, they left it wide open there too, because there were some things that he said. And also uh, Mitsuo's uh, grandmother had stated that begged the question because I, they talked about the comet hitting before or hitting the town and, and then, they put two and Teshi put two and two together that maybe that's what created that crater like a long time ago, created the crater where the yes. lake's at. Yes. A long time ago too as well. And it seems t- it seemed for like a moment that you were gonna get um where you were gonna get to hear that the grandma was maybe possibly trading bodies too as well with with a person in that situation. And it didn't go as well as it should have because should, they should have leaned on that. That would have been great. Yeah, because you you hear the the father. The father is just like, well, it's it, maybe it's it's probably just a uh, me me Mina me a me a Mitsu trait where they're just crazy at some points, you know. Uh huh. And like he says that, and you're just kind of like, all right. So does that mean his mom was trading spaces every so often, and then? Like I that part I wasn't sure. It's like was his was his mom trading places or or his, is that his mom? I don't know actually. The grandmother. Um. The um. No. 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 Their mom's side. 
Like, okay, that was their mom. Yeah, yeah. That, that maybe his wife and whatnot, they were kind of, you know, there was some sort of backstory or craziness going on whenever that first comet hit mm-hmm. that created a crater there. Um, I was wondering, I was wondering if that was what he was alluding to, but they never went into it, so we never know. Mm-hmm. Um, you can add that one. Um, um, so- uh, Sakura doing the broadcasting. Mm-hmm. You can add that as attention um, because, you know, she. I think she snuck into a place to do that. I want to say she. She knew it too. She was just like, "That's illegal." Yeah, yeah, and she still still did it. Um, I think that one is definitely up there. Um, yeah, because no one on Taki's side they didn't do anything outlandish. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, Okudera, you can just say it's thirsty, but that's about it. <laughs> right. Um. <laughs> So if we're gonna go with a bang, it has to be uh, Tessie because Tessie is the only one that really made the biggest scene. Um, yeah, and the fact that like he was down for it, like for better for worse. So I think he deserved it, and I'm and part of me is proud of him for sticking his guns, even though it's his father's business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know, so like I like I'm proud of you, but not, and so like. Yeah, I think he I think he got it. I think he deserved this one. So that's a fair one. Um so I'm I'm gonna go with Taki just because he molested uh Mitsua without actually letting her know that okay. he was molesting her. All we saw was the boob grab, but we know he did more. Yeah. Yeah. Well we you know, know he did more. You know so. Mitsu only grabbed her grabbed the junk one time. So that's all we yeah, know. Yeah, I mean she has to grab the junk because she has to pee out of it. I'm just saying yeah. and adjust it like every five seconds if you're a guy, you know. Well, it's time to get to uh, one of our favorite parts, the Rotten Tomatoes. So what you got for us, Nam? The tomato meter. The tomato meter. Whether we fresh like Will Smith or uh, rotten fresh. like, uh, like uh, Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs. <laughs> <laughs> or Carl. Carl, yeah. <laughs> so He's what got you got? Krabs. Anyway, so we go to our Rotten Tomato meter which isn't our Rotten Tomato Meter, but the Rotten Tomato Meter that lets us know what the critics and the audience thought about this movie and how many people reviewed this movie. And Jeremy and I will let you know what our assessment of this movie is and which way we lean. So the critics out of 117 people gave this a 98%. The audience out of 12,509 people gave this a 94%. So both fresh, freshly squeezed. <laughs> you don't, you don't squeeze tomatoes because that would be bad. So it's fresh. <gasps> tomato juice. I <laughs> guess if a movie's bad, we'll be like tomato crush. Tomato crush. Yep. Um, that'll be our new line. That'd tomato be a disgusting crush. soda. Crush tomatoes. You know, like the can crush and then tomato. Oh, that'd be a terrible soda drink. Anyways, sorry. Oh yeah. Go yeah, on. they make weird sodas anyways in general. So, Jeremy, uh, what do you lean to and why? All right. So, we know where the 90% is coming from. We all know. If you're a listener and everything, we know where it's coming from. It's coming from the, the, the cleverness of the story. We get that. Okay? So, to me, it comes down to the did you enjoy for what it is? To me, personally, did you enjoy what it is? I enjoy for what it is, but giving it a 90% meaning that you are telling me that this movie is so unique and so good that you should this movie should be remembered unforgettable to me in this particular case i will say that this movie is very unique and very clever and i glad i watched this movie regardless of all the stuff i said before and i and i wish there was more time to breathe for your characters all that stuff tv show maybe do a tv show next time or redo it um but my my issue is is that it was too long for for this movie for what they were trying to do, and you didn't do the character development for that long stretch, right? I w- you you try to stretch it out more of trying to glue all the story and make sure everything is covered more than let us enjoy the characters and why we should care about these characters and why we hope we want these characters to 
to meet and do that. And the movie kind of lacked on that. It leaned too much on trying to get this story across more than going with the characters. When it comes to animes, I like character build for this. Um, so I'm a 94. And honestly, I would bring it down to an 80. But for this case, I'm a 94. So, no. Um, this movie's good. Um, I like the movie. And I do. Um, I do in a sense that it's one of those movies that I think you really have to be in a mood to watch. It's a movie I like, kind of like I like a, a Beautiful Mind or um, Inception, even though I like Inception a lot more. Um, it's those styles of movies that I like where there's, there's, a, there's a movie that makes you think. It's somewhere to me borderlines between Inception and like uh, Interstellar. Because Interstellar to me, like Jeremy, is not my not horrendously my cup of tea. And I understand that it's a slow burn, but uh it's it's one of those movies you really have to be in the mood to watch. And I couldn't necessarily recommend this as a date movie. Actually, I probably wouldn't recommend this as a date movie unless the person you're with is an anime watcher. Mm-hmm. Because there are other animated movies that are love stories that are a lot better. And I would be curious to see if they could do this as a live action movie. In fact, I think people would connect with it a little bit more if they did. Okay. Um, personally, because I think live action, like rom- romantic movies are a little bit more uh, there. I feel like there's more of a connection there. But all in all, kind of like what we talked about all the way through, um, I think its shortcomings comes with um, not not capitalizing on not capitalizing on like the opportunities that they had with the different characters, being really stuck on the story itself, um, being very stuck on its main plot point versus trying to expand it just a little bit and have a little bit of fun doing it. Cause I think that was the other thing too, is like, I, I don't, I don't think I really had fun watching this movie. Did you? The first half. Yeah. I had fun with the first half. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I can't say that I sit there and I said I had fun watching this movie. I can't say it was, I just didn't have fun watching the movie. Okay. In that aspect, I don't think it was meant for me to have fun watching the movie, but so I give it a ninety-four percent with the audience too as well because of all that. Um, critically, I can understand why the critics gave it a ninety-eight percent or an average of a ninety-eight percent. I have no argument there, but as a casual movie watcher, um, I can't give it something that high if it's something I just didn't have fun watching or I didn't enjoy. Or wasn't it was out of my realm of um, movies that I watch typically, and it was good for what it was, but uh, you know, ninety eight is way too high. Ninety eight is almost a near perfect movie. I have to love that movie through and through for it to be uh, something like that. So ninety four for sure. Okay, so. As a listener, um, if you enjoy this movie or you did not enjoy this movie, leave a comment down below if you're watching us on YouTube. And while you're there, go ahead and press that subscribe button so you can enjoy not only this show but all our other great content on here. And if you're a listener, remember, if uh, if you're if you're enjoying it on Apple Podcasts, remember we have other listening spots on top of that. If, you know, if that's not a spot for you, they're all down in the description. Also, too, you can visit on our uh, Twitter page where we have a link tree, and that link tree will take you to all our hooks are places where we're at if that makes it easier for you um at program in capital p capital e and then on uh facebook you can join us on facebook too where we're always posting something up there and um with that you know just let us know leave a comment saying if you enjoy the movie do you not like the movie you know is this a good date movie or you know is it not you know um let us know what movies you like to see, what anime movies you like us to kind of take a look at in the future and whatnot. So with that, thank you so much, and we will catch you on our next flick. Yes, our next season, and this is a wrap for season two. <laughs>